Good afternoon and appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. Obviously, a significant announcement from our standpoint uh, as we uh, made the announcement about playing uh, football, the whatever our spring 2020 season uh, ends up being, as well as the 2021 fall season at uh, Dignity Health Sports Park. It's a decision that was not entered into lightly. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, working through this. Uh, however, at the end of the day, as we think about long term and uh, opening the stadium, the new stadium, Aztec Stadium in 2022, uh, where it can be most successful, where we're able to handle ingress and egress best, we maximize our parking, uh, we allow campus and the rest of the development, the residential and the commercial, uh, to move forward. Uh, in a quicker, more efficient manner. It's a cost savings uh, for us. Uh, this made the most sense. Obviously, we were really looking forward to having uh, one more season uh, at SDCCU. This, I believe, would be game week for UCLA. We were looking at uh, packing SDCCU to beat the Bruins again. Uh, but obviously, that's not happening. So uh, we chose to go with certainty. We are certain uh, that we've started construction and that fall of 2022 is very achievable. And with the uncertainty around when, we, when exactly we might start the football season, we felt it best to go ahead and make this move. Uh, it allows us to pick up a little time on uh, demolition of the current stadium as we'll start a little earlier than we had uh, anticipated. But uh, we are excited to go north to play at Dignity Health Sports Park for our student athletes. This is going to be a great experience for them, uh, a much better, much better experience as you think about the amenities that come with the stadium there. Uh, our fans are going to see an, a much improved experience as well. Uh, you know, better video boards, better concessions. Uh, it's just it's going to take a little bit longer to get there. We also have a large presence in Orange County and L.A. County with SDSU alums. So we're excited for them to have uh, a little closer opportunity to come see the Aztecs. Again, it's a short-term thing. We are San Diego State University. Uh, we are going to be here forever. And we're excited that we are building a football stadium in San Diego, that we are building a stadium uh, for soccer, for concerts, for all of the other events that go. Uh, again, we are part of this community. We're just going to run up the road for a little bit to play football. And then we're going to come back and we're going to open a phenomenal stadium and continue developing a campus that is great for San Diego. Uh, so I'll take questions now. Hey, J.D., good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, part of this obviously had to do with lack of facilities maybe in San Diego to host. Did you, did you look seriously at any of the community colleges or any other venue? And secondly, is part of this getting out from underneath the 12 million per year operational cost for, to run the old stadium for the next couple of years? Thank you. I appreciate the uh, question, Lee. Uh, yeah, we looked in San Diego, and as you, as you think about a Division I football experience and all of the different things that go along with that, uh, there really wasn't a venue in town that was going to be consistently available uh, for us to play in. So, again, it, it's important to make sure our student athletes get a great experience. And uh, we just didn't think there were any venues in San Diego that could satisfy uh, what we wanted to present for our student athletes uh, and also our fans. And then there's also, as you think about uh, some of the other things around the game, our television partners and having the ability to come in and set up and do uh, the television experience that we want to put out uh, led us to, to where we are today. Uh, as far as the, you know, the current stadium, I, you know, the biggest thing for us was timeline at this point and what allows us to move forward uh, with the site, with the uh, construction of the current stadium and all the other, you know, ancillary items that go with that as far as, you know, sewer, electrical, uh, getting roads put in, having construction done. Pardon me if I sound like the dope in the room here, <laughs> but I'm reading and listening to you talk about COVID being a part of why this isn't working out for you but i still haven't heard you say a specific we had to get rid of the 2021 season because blank 
in, in the sense of you were going to play them before and now you're not, and we had to do it. Can you, can you give me that we had to in there and then we have to follow up after that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with the 2021 season, we had to demo the stadium in the first quarter of 2021 to ensure that all of the uh, all of the things around the stadium, we could build the stadium itself uh, while leaving the other stadium up. However, as you start thinking about parking, ingress, egress, uh, electrical, stormwater, sewage, uh, and all of these other pieces that go along with the stadium, uh, we needed to demo SDCCU uh, sooner than we had initially anticipated. And again, this has been, you know, a, a three and a half plus year process. Uh, some of the things we thought we knew at the beginning is you start thinking about floodplain and other items that go along with that. As we learned more about the site, as we got onto the site, uh, you know, we, we learned certain things. So this really, it all, uh, it all led to the answer uh, that we have today. And then obviously COVID and the impacts on the 2020 season have led us to where we are with, with those games. Excellent. And secondly, when it comes to the idea of fans, did the fact that you still don't we still technically all of a sudden we have an idea of when fans of any kind, whether it's um, student athletes, family, that the guy down the street, did that push you towards where you are today, especially in terms of how to give you revenue? I yeah, you know, I think the, the big thing for us is we'll continue monitoring what's going on in the state. We're working with Dignity Health Sports Park already on what their plan is for allowing, you know, fans back into the building, uh, you know, over time. And then obviously we're planning, you know, hopefully to be able to have a full building come fall of 2021. Our hope is that we'll, you know, we'll be able to have fans in the building, that we'll be able for student athletes uh, parents, brothers and sisters and friends, uh, that they'll be able to watch those games in the spring. Uh, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. Hey, J.D., I, I know this is kind of low-hanging fruit, but it's, it's, it's out there. Any concern about the, the taint and the stink of being associated with another San Diego football team fleeing San Diego, although you were going temporarily, to play in Carson, which is exactly what the Chargers did and all the negative blowback that came with Chargers now being directed towards the Aztecs. I, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about the Chargers. The Chargers couldn't build a football stadium in San Diego. The Chargers couldn't figure it out. The Chargers chose to leave San Diego and become the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, we're building a stadium for the community. We're building a campus for the community. Uh, we're building residential for the community. We're all about San Diego, and this is going to allow us to – have a better facility, a better setup for the community of San Diego when we open in 2022. Uh, again, like I said, we're disappointed that we're not going to have the opportunity to send off SDCCU like we'd want to. You know, so many great events have happened there, uh, World Series, Super Bowls, all the concerts, all the other things that have happened. And, and that is disappointing for me, and I know it's disappointing to a lot of people. But we are San Diego State University, one city, one team, and we're going to, you know, take a quick trip up the, uh, up the interstate, and then we're, we're coming back. Eddie, one other thing you mentioned earlier, it makes financial sense for you guys. Is it cheaper to lease in Carson than, than play at the queue or play all road games? Does that make more economic sense for you guys? Uh, right now, uh, again, is it looks like from an expense standpoint, uh, renting up in Carson will be better for us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when we got the keys to the stadium, it was not in, you know, we all, we all knew the stadium wasn't in great shape, but uh, what it would have taken us to uh, get the stadium ready to play would have been significant. Um, so being able to play up in Carson, provide a better experience uh, for our student athletes and fan, which gets into that return on investment, uh, we're happy with it. Hey, J.D., just a little over two and a half months ago, you guys were talking like you would still be able to play that 2021 season, and almost immediately after it was over, you implode SDCCU Stadium. Was there something you guys learned after ESCO 
escrow closed that made this so the 2021 wasn't uh, viable? Or were you guys already thinking about that even before escrow closed? Yeah, we've been studying this for a while. I think one of the, uh, you know, one of the challenges for us was when were we going to close escrow? We weren't willing to be out of the stadium for two years. Uh, unfortunately, COVID is going to turn that into what amounts to two football seasons, uh, but just a year out of San Diego. So, uh, you know, really working through uh, that sales process and when we could actually get on the site, start construction, uh, understand what our construction timelines were going to be, that we finally arrived, that this is definitely what we needed to do. And just an another question. Uh, in going so far north, what kind of math have you guys done to figure out what will the trade-off be in attendance playing so far north? I don't, you know, I think because we've and just – I, you know, I think the big thing is since we've just now daylighted this idea, we'll have to see, you know, the number of folks that want to drive up from San Diego. Again, it's it's a limited number of games uh, over the year. Uh, and also we do have a significant alumni base in uh, the L.A. area, Orange County. So we'll tap into that as well. But again, it's it's going to be. You know, do you want to support San Diego State University? Do you want to support our student athletes uh, and make the trip up? Again, it's going to be a heck of a better experience than what you've had at SDCCU in the past. Hey, JD, I'm curious what Brady had to say and what possible both positive and negative impacts on, on recruiting uh, you might anticipate with this with this decision. I, yeah, definitely had lots of conversations with Brady. He's been on board all along. Uh, they understand the long game as well. This also, I mean, it helps us in L.A. We're going to, L.A. kids are going to have a much shorter trip to, uh, to come see the Aztecs play over the next, um, over the next year. He also know that this, this helps us get into the new stadium in the best possible way going forward. So, you know, while, you know, again, typically a football team is going to go spend the night in a hotel the night before a game and then go to the stadium and play, uh, it's, you know, you're just driving a little further to get to that hotel and then go into the game or go to the stadium and play. And it's going to be a much better stadium experience. It's much more intimate. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll, you know, put good number of fans in the stands. Aztec fans will show up and these kids will have a great experience. And those that, you know, might graduate before they have an opportunity to play in the new stadium, they're going to be playing in something similar to what they're, uh, what they'll eventually play in in San Diego. Hey, J.D. Um, if you guys play in a Mountain West championship game, whether that exists in the spring or in the fall, would that also be played at Dignity Health if you guys were to host that game? Yes, if we were to host the game, we would play at Dignity Health. J.D., uh, when you had conversation with the conference level from the commissioner, uh, what, what was the reaction from their perspective? And, and going forward, where are you with the blueprint to play games in the spring? Is there a number of games that have been determined? Is it be strictly uh, conference games? Uh, when's the schedule going to be out? Where, where are you on that process? Thank you. Uh, the conference has been very supportive. They recognize that uh, you know we are improving our situation from a stadium standpoint and thus a student athlete experience standpoint. So they've been very supportive of this. Uh, as far as spring, we've spent a significant amount of time, the athletic directors, the board of directors, uh, the medical group, discussing what that looks like. Uh, one of our, you know, the biggest pieces that we're still trying to nail down is the, the testing piece. Uh, lots of conversations with lots of different companies out there uh, as we look to set that, and that will help dictate, you know, what, this, uh, what the season looks like, the number of games, uh, it will be a conference-only slate, um, so, but look for more information on that hopefully in the coming weeks. J.D., I think you mentioned that uh, they'll be taking down SDCCU Stadium in the first quarter of 2021. Is there any way to be more specific? I mean, is that like right January 1st, or, or how will that kind of play out? I, we have got to – you've got to do abatement um, and pull out all of the uh, items that need to be – uh, take it, uh, discard it off site um, as we are going to grind up the concrete from the current stadium and utilize that uh, in the base for the site work. Um, we are working on the ability for people to purchase 
uh, seats, parking signs, and other things like that. More information will be coming out on that uh, in the near future. And to follow up, would you guys have any kind of event that would allow, and maybe if this is all COVID would prevent some of that, but would you, there be any plan to maybe do anything so that fans from around the city could say goodbye in any way? We've had discussions on that. One is COVID related, obviously. There's some fire marshal uh, issues as you talk about ingress and egress into the building. Um, and the other part is the building was just, it was not in very good condition when we took it over. So the amount of effort and dollars to uh, get it up to speed to have people um, able to come in would be uh, somewhat challenging as well. Uh, JD, what, what kind of scheduling guarantees have you gotten from Carson about dates? Because the LA Galaxy plays in there, you know, usually through October. Um, and MLS is very adamant about playing on Saturday nights. Uh, are, are you looking at a lot of weekday games? No, we've, we're obviously that'll be something we'll work through with their policies with MLS. Um, we have got our non-conference games for next year already set, so we're able to you know protect those dates. And then as we work with the conference on what dates need to be blocked, uh, we'll do that. But. They don't seem to have um, any concerns over us being able to mesh our schedule with the Galaxy. And as a quick follow-up, um, the UCLA game, is there any chance that you would play it up there as your quote-unquote home game? Um, don't know. Still working through what this year's non-conference games are going to look like, uh, how we move those forward contractually. Uh, we'll have Utah and Boise State – um, among our seven home games next year uh, that we would play at Dignity Health.